The main character in the movie Girl Interrupted is Susanna Kaysen, who is an 18-year-old girl who landed in a mental institution, Claymore, after chasing a bottle of aspirin with a bottle of vodka. Here she is diagnosed by her psychiatrist, Dr. Melvin, with borderline personality disorder. When she arrives at Claymore, she meets a ward full of women suffering with various psychiatric illnesses. Lisa Rowe is a psych is a psychopath and one of Susanna's closest friends in the institution. Lisa and Susanna have a toxic relationship throughout the movie where they defy the rules and break free from the institution walls only to be brought back. The end of the movie shows Susanna being released from Claymore after an 18-month stay. Borderline personality disorder. An instability of self-image, relationships, and mood. Uncertainty about goals, impulsive in activities that are self-damaging, such as casual sex. Throughout the film, we begin to see how Susanna really does possess these qualities. She has an instability in her relationship with not only her parents, she has a very rocky relationship with them, but her boyfriend, she's impulsive in the way that they have sexual relations at the mental hospital. As well as the day that they break up, she kisses a worker. She's also uncertain about her goals because she doesn't know what she wants to do after school is over. Just how long is my daughter going to be here? With all due respect, Mr. Kaysen, psychiatry and economics are, uh, are different. Depends on her response to uh, treatments. Look, it's almost Christmas. What are we supposed to say to the people back home who care about her? You see, Melvin, what's going on here? is my parents are having a little holiday cocktail Christmas party crisis. As I mentioned before, a symptom of borderline personality disorder is an instability in relationships. And this clip just shows the rockiness of Susanna and her parents' relationship. Her parents care more about what their friends will think and what they'll say about their daughter not being present, as opposed to their daughter's overall condition. Your progress has plateaued. I'm ambivalent. In fact, that's my new favorite word. Do you know what that means, ambivalence? I don't care. On the contrary, Susanna. Ambivalence suggests strong feelings in opposition. Will I stay or will I go? Am I sane or am I crazy? Those aren't courses of action. They can be, dear. In the beginning of the film, we see Susanna, you know, she's not taking her daily medication. She's not admitting her problem. She says that it was just a headache. She doesn't say that she was trying to commit suicide by overdosing. Very interesting that she chooses a word that describes exactly what she is going through without even realizing it. She's torn between seeking treatment or continuing to refuse it and continuing to refuse that she has a problem. I'll be talking about the art and culture in the movie Girl Interrupted. And in this movie, our main character, Susanna, is going through a lot of mental health problems. So her therapist and her parents decide that it would be best if she was sent to a mental hospital. Now, at this hospital, Obviously, all the workers are there to try to help the patients get better and try to get them in the healthiest form possible. And one way that they do this is through different sort of arts. For example, they have different art classes, like they do dance and they also have painting so that the patients can try to find something that they enjoy, something that they can express themselves in and hopefully feel mentally better. When it comes to the cultural aspect of this film, I wanted to mainly focus on the social culture. And this is because throughout the film, it's very obvious that Susanna's parents are very worked up and upset over the situation. However, it isn't necessarily for the right reasons. Her parents are mainly worried about their social lives and how their family and friends are gonna react or treat them once they find out about Susanna's situation. So instead of being there for their daughter and helping her get better and being worried for her and upset over the fact that she is struggling, they're more upset on how the whole situation is going to affect their social lives. And this really goes to show how much of a social stigma there is behind mental illnesses and mental health. 
and how much it can truly affect the patient. The majority of this movie takes place at a mental institution called Claymore. The patients that attend this facility have a wide range of psychological disorders. The most prevalent diagnosis in this movie includes eating disorders, schizophrenia, sociopathic behaviors, addiction, and drug abuse. Susanna, the main character, is diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which is a condition that interferes with regulating emotions. People with this disorder feel emotions intensely and for extended periods of time, which makes it harder for them to return to a stable state. Borderline personality disorder is genetically correlated, meaning that Susanna most likely acquired this disorder from a family member. The reason for Susanna going to Claymore in the first place was due to the fact that she purposely took an entire bottle of aspirin to relieve her headache. The therapist believed this was enough reason to send her away for attempted suicide. After Susanna had taken the aspirin, the drug spread throughout her body and bloodstream, causing symptoms of nausea, ringing of her ears, confusion, and fainting. During a drug overdose, your body's organs begin to slow and sometimes completely shut down. Drugs can alter brain areas necessary for life-sustaining functions. The brain is responsible for regulating basic functions, and when a foreign substance, or in Susanna's case, a mass amount of a normally helpful substance, enters the body, the results can be tragic. When drugs are misused or abused, it can lead to dependency, addiction, overdose incidents, and in most cases, death. The movie Girl Interrupted is based on a true story depicting historical, social, and cultural issues of psychiatric facilities treating mental illness. With all the sanity and insanity that goes on, even in a renowned psychiatric hospital, the movie Girl Interrupted critiques America's mental health system, questioning whether or not psychiatric facilities help heal mental illness or just exasperate those who have them, including their families. As mentioned previously, Girl Interrupted follows the storyline of an 18-year-old girl who is diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, or in this video, I will say BPD. Left untreated, people with BPD, such as Susanna, struggle through life with an unstable thought process, heightened impulses, lack of self-image, and unstable relationships. The stigma of negative feelings about BPD, along with other mental illness, still exists. This stigma is often felt by the individual diagnosed as well as by society, mass media, and even some of the mental health professionals themselves. If you don't have BPD, it may be hard to understand Susanna's decisions in the film, including to pursue a sexual relationship with her high school English teacher, break up with her boyfriend, and engage in self-harm. In the article, The Stigma Associated with BPD, it is stated some professionals even choose to limit the amount of time of BPD patients they're willing to see or refuse to treat people with BPD altogether. Patients are often labeled as treatment resistant and dropped, which reinforces the misconception that asking for help is hopeless. The stigma of BPD is once again displayed in a movie during family therapy at the hospital. When the therapist diagnosed Susanna with BPD, Susanna's mother cried out, how did this happen? Before Susanna was even told of her diagnosis. The mom's reaction was about how this affects her, showing little concern about protecting her daughter's emotional needs. In addition, Susanna's mother shows that she too was unstable, as she states, I can't do this, inferring that Susanna was a cause of her pain. Her mother projected to her daughter more emotional instability by saying in a passive-aggressive manner, I can't be there for you. The mom's emotional instability and black and white thinking of her daughter doing this to her, and that she can't handle it, suggests she too was borderline. This would further validate her daughter's diagnosis, considering this is a disorder that is more common if you have a borderline parent. During her stay, social relations start to form within the institution as Susanna gets to know the other patients, including Polly, Cynthia, Lisa, Cody, Georgina, and Daisy. One of the most prominent patients is Lisa, a sociopath and long-term resident at the hospital. Lisa is the clique leader of the group of women at the institution. The movie's introduction of these all-female patients helps address not only their diagnoses, but the social connections and interactions between them in a mental institution compared to in a society. The women even form their own hierarchy inside the hospital, creating their own society as opposed to society outside of the institution. Being institutionalized for a long period of time can negatively create suppression of oneself due to unnatural social conditions. An example of this is being institutionalized in mental health institutions with all females like seen in the movie, or it could be compared to the institutionalization of criminals within a jail. 
This can intensify human desire, urging oneself to create other social means, which in some will create internal conflict, resulting in more guilt, shame, depression, and even trauma that can last a lifetime. When Susanna had made the choice to return to the hospital, the movie conveys only then that Susanna wants her recovery. The movie's ending portrays the hospital as righteous, as the epitome of recovery from mental illness for everybody. This belief may create more of a stigma on mental illness. Historically, the importance of mental health institutions as valuable cannot be argued. The need for us to always improve and want to understand better treatments for mental illness and the people who suffer, including the families and loved ones, should always be our goal. Historically, socially, and culturally, we need to be more involved and more aware of those who suffer and how to help, so institutions don't have to be the only answer.